Well, good, good day or whatever time of the day it is to, for you. I pray you'll have a blessed day and that uh, you'll experience God's grace and, and maybe some surprises today. So we're on the third type of soil from the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8. The first soil was the hard-packed or trampled-down soil. And um, the second kind was the, the rocky soil. And uh, the third kind that we have in our reading for tonight from Luke chapter 8 is the thorny soil. So in Luke chapter 8, verse 14, we have uh, this third kind of soil. As for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. So it sounds like this scripture this type of soil is referring to a, a gardener's responsibility to, to uproot a lot of weeds, do some work in the garden to, to weed his garden. My wife got a little needlepoint from her older sister some years ago, who is a master gardener and actually taught at the college level composting, or maybe it was the community level, composting and so on. She is no longer composting or gardening because of her age and some other um, responsibilities that uh, make it impossible for her to do so. But this needle point that she sent to Barb says is a, is a, is a, um, a takeoff or a little tweak on a piece of poetry by John Keats. A garden is a thing of beauty, and it keeps us uh, meter and a joy forever. But the needlepoint says, a garden is a thing of beauty and a job forever. So, <laughs> gardening is, uh, is a call to, to effort, and I think that's one of the Conclusions that we reach about the thorny soil. Remember, we are the soils that are referred to. Um, we being both, uh, I guess, anyone who hears this story that Jesus is telling, this allegory or parable of Jesus that has a spiritual meaning, whether we're believing or unbelieving or whether we're fin fence-sitters or or just what we are. Three out of four of the soils, however, do not prove to uh, present a harvest at the end. So uh, that's, that's the realistic uh, or the, the window on reality part of this, uh, this parable. So weeds are the competition in a garden for the nutrients and the moisture that goes on these plants to make them grow. And a gardener has to be attent attentive and timely in his uh, daily look at and care for his, um, his crop, his plants, his vegetables. And it seems to me that if one type of soil had a lot of weeds in it. It was because somebody was being careless, it was, who was being kind of lazy fair about um, reaching down, perhaps in the, in the scorching Middle Eastern sun, uh, was finding ways to talk himself out of going out and working, sweating, and grunting and groaning in his garden. So... A real good gardener would have a no-toleration policy in his garden for weeds. And it seems to me that as Christians, and, and being that soil that Jesus is speaking about, we too um, 
need to develop kind of a no tolerance, no tolerance, tolerance policy about our spiritual inner life garden as well. When we see them poking their heads up, we need to grab a hold of them or with a garden implement, uh, get them out of there in a way that doesn't uh, affect negatively uh, our vegetables and flowers. So this means that it takes an effort. It means that we have to have some initiative. We have to say, no, weeds is gonna, are going to be in my soil. And so if we have weeds growing in our soil, the ones that Jesus refers to here are, are those that choke. And they, these weeds are the cares and riches and pleasures of life. The cares and riches and pleasures of life. In other words, we can be so comfortable with worries, with um, watching the stock market, or with enjoying too much um, of things that may hurt our bodies or steal time away from the, our loved ones, that these things end up filling the clock of our inner minds with, with their contents rather than um, us caring about the quality of the soil and the nurture our plants are getting in our inner spiritual life. And so um, the result of the weeds choking out, the weeds are winning the battle for moisture and nutrients and uh, we've seen it again and again in our gardens, haven't we? They win the battle. They soon over, overwhelm and overshadow even the sunshine that our plants need. And so the fruit does not mature is what the parable says. The fruit does not mature, which means that we are um, immature. We can settle down to tolerating weeds and then we settle down. We live and let live with, with attitudes, with resentment, bitterness, jealousy, um, fear, and other things that end up choking our faith, our love, and our hope. So I hope that you have a good eye and that you have intentionality in the care for your spiritual garden inside. Because, um, and I hope that you really desire to be the fourth soil in this story, which we'll take a look at on Monday. So God bless you and fill you with that faith, hope, and love that I just referred to. And uh, may your weekend be recreative. And, I'll, and the chances are you will be, as me, in your garden picking some weeds. Amen.